Hello, everyone. My name is Chen Yuzhang. I'm the engineer from VMware, and now I'm working for the Project Harbor. As you know, security is gradually receiving more and more attention, and it's a very important aspect for enterprise users. So today, our session will discuss about how to use Harbor and Nerus to reshape security in Cloud Native. There are two parts for this session. The first part, I will introduce the Project Harbor, and the next part, my colleague Simon will share the Project Nerus. Um, Harbor is an open source trusted cloud native registry that uh, projects such stores, signs, and scans content. Harbor extends the open source Docker distribution by adding the functionalities usually required by users such as security, identity, and management. Harbor registry closer to the build and run environment can improve the image transport efficiency. Harbor also supports uh, replication of images between registries and also offers advanced security features such as user management, access control, and audit log. The mission of Harbor is to help users consistently and securely manage artifacts for Kubernetes. Uh, let's go through the core capabilities that Harbor can provide. The multi the multi tenancy is important for the enterprise users. Harbor provides the back. The user can be assigned as different roles with different resource permissions, and different teams also can manage their resource on their own by the project isolation. Mm, by the policy, user can manage quotas for different projects. When the quota reached, the user can use the retention and the garbage collection to clean up some useless artifacts in Harbor to release the storage. If user wanted to protect some artifacts already released or published, they can apply the immutable rule by matching specified repositories and text name. The vulnerabilities can be managed as by policy as well. A uh, user can add false positive CVEs to the, the system or project a lot list to bypass uh, deployment security restrictions. For the distribution of artifacts, Harbor also provides rich functions. In addition to Harbor, there are also many well-known registries in Cloud Native, such as Docker Hub, AWS ECR, Azure ACR, and so on. So Harbor provides the ability to copy artifacts. It is convenient to copy the artifacts between the Harbor and these third-party registries. This is a very convenient and useful function for some users who want to copy the artifacts on the Harbor to their registries as a backup or migrate from other registry to the Harbor. In addition, Harbor currently also supports the functions of acting as a proxy. The proxy will cache the remote artifacts on the Harbor. When the remote artifact is updated, the cached image of the Harbor will also be updated by the user pull requests. In scenarios where the remote registry network is limited or there are some rate limits for API, it can help user pull the artifacts they want from the Harbor directly instead of from remote registry. At the same time, with the increase of the scale of the enterprise Kubernetes cluster, the warehouse of a single center is often um, unable to meet the pull request of a large number of nodes in a short period of time. So some enterprise users will use the P2P to speed up the uh, distribution of artifacts. So Harbor also integrates the P2P preheating function. At present, Harbor can support preheat the artifacts to the Dragonfly from Alibaba and the Kraken from Uber. Preheat the preheat the artifacts to the P2P network in advance, which can speed up the later pooling when required. Um, Harbor also provides the IAM artifact sign and scan CV exceptions to guarantee the security and the compilers. In terms of uh, external capability, Harbor supports configuring webhook notifications by project, sending notifications to the consumer 
when the events occurred in Harbor. The plugbow uh, scanner realized the freedom of the scanner and the scanner from different vendors can be connected to the Harbor at the same time. In addition, in CI and CD scenario, the robot account can interact with Harbor more conveniently and e effectively, and also ensure the security. At the same time, all function of the Harbor provides the REST API externally to facilitate user calls. Uh, this is the architecture of Harbor. From the top to down, the top layer is the client such as Kubelet and Docker client. The outer layer of a Harbor service has a proxy, maybe an in Nginx ingress, which is reasonable for forwarding the traffic to the corresponding components. And then comes to the core service of Harbor, which is reasonable for the processing of all API requests. And down are some other component services, such as job service to handle asynchronized tasks. And the bottom data layer is dependent on some data service, such as Redis and Postgres. On the left are some identify providers and the monitoring related integrations. And on the right is a list of integrations with some third party scanners and artifact registries. Uh, next, we will dive into replication and scanning as narrows will mainly rely on these two functions. The goal of replication is pulling artifacts to local harbor from remote or push artifacts in local harbor to remote. From the picture, we can see that resources are refined internally and each resource has its own manager such as policy and the registry. The controller is reasonable to processing the whole operations. Eventually the replication job will be submitted to the job service. Finally, the job will be executed by the job service worker and sync the status to Harbor Core by hook. Uh, the integration service handles the scanning for artifacts. Harbor defines a common spec to the pluggable plug, plug scanner. The spec is the contract between Harbor and scanner. So the vendor of scanner should also implement the adapter service which followed the spec to connect their scanners to Harbor. The scan request also be converted to the job of job service. The job will send HTTP requests to adapter service and wait for collecting and aggregating scan summary report. Such architecture make it, makes it possible to um, scan one artifact by multiple, multiple scanners to enhance the security. At last, let's take a look for the two futures by demo. By default, there is a library project in the Harbor. Project is a concept in the Harbor. And the, pro the repository and artifacts are managed in one project. You can see the replication and integration service from administration sidebar. The two functions are the system scope. So please make sure uh, you logged in as system admin account. Firstly, let's check the replication. The replication is managed by replication policy. So you need add a new replication rule before you use it. Uh, but before set the rule, you need to add the remote registry to Harbor because Harbor needs some metadata of the remote registry. Click the registries to manage the remote registries. And then uh, there are some configurations need to be padded. Currently, Harbor supports uh, many third party registries such as ECR, ACR, and Docker Hub, and so on. Then name your remote registry. Uh, the description is optional. 
uh, the endpoint URL is required. It can be an IP address or FQDN, which can be accessed by Harbor. The access ID and access secret can be used when your remote registry is private and Harbor needs the credential to pull or push images from it. The last configuration is the third. You can uncheck the checkbox to disable Harbor Verify the remote registry cert. It's useful if your remote registry was deployed by self-signed cert. Finally, we can test the connection, and if no problem, we can save it. Now for demo, let's use the Docker Hub as the remote registry. Okay, it's passed successfully, so let's click to save it. So far, the registry has been added successfully. Let's go back to add a new replication rule. You need to name your rule. Let's try test. Uh, the description is optional. And there are two modes, push-based and pull-based. Push-based means push the image from local harbor to remote registry. Pull-based means push the images from remote registry to local harbor. They are two replications in opposite directions. Next section is the source re results filter. You can define your customized rules for replication, such as um, matching different name or tag or label. You can go through the tool tip for more detailed guidance. Then choose the registry which added in the previous step. The destination namespace means you want to put the image under which resource. For Harbor, it's its project name. If we leave it empty, it will use the name as same with the resource. You can also reduce the nested uh, repository structure by configuring the button. There are three trigger modes in Harbor. By default, is manual. Manual means you need to run the replication by manually, call the Harbor API or click from Harbor UI. Uh, the scheduled means that it can set the replication triggered periodically by providing a cron string. For the last, for the last is the event based. Uh, it's especially used for when you want to back up the new pushed image to the remote registry. A replication will be triggered if the new image pushed events happen. You can also click the checkbox if you want to replicate the deletion operation. In simple words, Harbor will delete the image from remote registry if the deletion happened on the local Harbor. Um, set the bandwidth if you want to limit the network input or op output for the replication job. The last option is override. Enable this to uh, will uh, override the remote resource if it exists, same with the source. For the demo, let's replicate only one Redis image from Docker Hub to local harbor and leave other options default test pool radius. And let's only replicate one is five zero. Okay, click the, then click the replicate to trigger the job. After trigger yet, you can find 
yet in the execution execution histories you can look the status and progress from the history as well if you want to look for more task details you can click the execution id in the task page you can see how many ongoing tasks running under the job and click the logs buttons to catch up the running logs of the task when replicating Let's wait a moment for the replication job finished. Okay, it has already succeeded. Let's go to the project library to check whether the Redis image has been copied to the local harbor. Yep, it has been located here and can click the digest for more artifact details. Alright, this is a simple demo for replications for Harbor, but after user pushed or replicated images to Harbor, how can we guarantee the security of the image? Now the integration service integration service will come into work. Click the integration service to check scanners in Harbor. By default, Trivi is the built-in and default scanner for Harbor. You can add other scanners by providing some scanner information. Um, after adding it, you can click it to see more to see more metadata like scanner vendor or version or more specific configurations. If you have multiple scanner instance, you can choose one as the default and also support custom customize for every project. The vulnerability scan can be triggered by a scheduled time like replication, which can help secure your images timely. Now let's go back to the artifact page to scan the Redis image. After clicking the scan button, um, you can see the scanning is happened. Let's wait for a moment because scanner need to pull this image layer and analyze the vulnerabilities in the blob. You can see the vulnerability scanned from this image by hover the icon, the number of vulnerabilities by different um, levels will show up. By clicking the artifact, you can see more details, detailed information such as CVE ID, description, affected packages, and the fixed versions. Okay, now let's try to pull the image by Docker client. The image has been put successfully, but this image which includes the vulnerabilities may threaten the security of the application. We can set some policy to disallow pulling the image with vulnerabilities. Let's go to the project configuration page. and click the prevent vulnerable images from running. You can choose the security level based on your scenario. And here Redis image contains the critical vulnerabilities. So we choose the critical. Save the, and then save the configuration. Let's try to pull the image to see what happened. Now you can see that Harbor has prevented the outside pooling for this image because it includes the critical vulnerabilities. 
but if some vulnerabilities are false positive or have no effects to to your application after assessment how can we bypass this you can add the system or project allow list now let's go back to the artifact page to find out the two critical CVE ID and copy them to the allow list. The first one is this. And another one is this. Now let's save it. Okay, let's to try to repose the image again by Docker client. Yep, right now the image can be pulled successfully, although it includes two critical vulnerabilities, but they were added in the allow list, so this is as expected. Not only for this, Harbor has more advanced security related functions waiting for your exploring to protect your artifacts. That's all the demo. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Simon. I'm an architecture from VMware. I'm going to give a brief introduction to a Harbor related open source project. Project Neros. Let's watch a propaganda film first. Harbor is the number one trusted cloud native registry for on premise container images, and they're trusted for good reason. They use third party static scanning tools whenever an image is created to ensure the images are free from vulnerabilities. And while static scanning is valuable, it doesn't prevent multi-step or supply chain attacks. Some malware contains code that only activates during runtime, and by then, it's too late. Today, we're announcing Project Narrows, which adds dynamic scanning to Harbor. It allows you to assess the security posture of Kubernetes clusters at runtime. So vulnerabilities are identified, images are flagged, and workloads can be quarantined. Project Narrows runs on the workload cluster and looks at the full end-to-end -end life cycle of an image in a container. You can easily analyze the data collected, assess the security postures of your workloads, generate reports, and enforce predefined policies. Get ready to meet your compliance needs by adding dynamic scanning to your security arsenal today. Okay, as we all know, there are three major challenges in cloud native security areas, including misconfigurations, known or unknown vulnerabilities, and exposure of secrets. Currently, organizations typically implement a cloud native security strategy to ensure security. And generally, the strategy consists of consideration of some principles, including something like shift security left, continuous security controls, CICD pipelines integration, and traceability, accountability, and visibility. At the same time, the three major challenges are exactly the challenges that Project Narrows aimed to address along with Harbor as well. Today, cloud native users leverage Harbor to provide static analysis of vulnerabilities in images using scanners such as Trivi, Clear. And the static analyze, analysis will scan the images after they've been pushed to a registry. Project Narrows will provide a unique addition along with Harbor, as it will allow users to access the security posture of Kubernetes cluster at runtime. This means images will be scanned 
at the time of introduction to a cluster. So vulnerabilities are caught in real time and images will be fly. And workloads can be quarantined. To further and complete the story of Kubernetes infrastructures from the security perspective, we designed and delivered a set of capabilities that enable users to access the runtime security posture of the Kubernetes cluster and protect them from vulnerabilities and attacks. With project narrows, user can knowing clearly the overall security posture of their Kubernetes cluster and make sure the actual security situations match their security compliance expectations and alert any breakage. In the meanwhile, users can set up a policy to quarantine the workloads sourced from vulnerable images and stopping the propagation of the risks. And furthermore, it can also scan the Kubernetes cluster misconfigurations following the CIS benchmark. Additionally, Project Neros has already been integrated with VMware application catalog as well. For VMware application catalog, once it delivers images to a registry, it does not, not have any awareness of the runtime security information of the packages it provided. But with Neros, VMware application catalog, Governor, and the project Neros can work together to deliver a better experience for IT managers that need to cover OSS application catalogs. With project Neros integrated, it allows VC to provide meaningful security alerts and helps catalog administrators to detect latent threats due to outdated and end of life software. So why Project Neros? With Project Neros, it will be very easy to integrate with different platforms. It can be run on any Kubernetes and platform. It is also a uni unified security platform. All the information of security risk breakage can be gathered to a central place to analyze. It is also an open source project that is free to use and extend. Here is a typical user journey of this project. Images are firstly cached to Harbor from some third party registries, such as Doc Hub. Then images can be scanned in Harbor and the security data is generated in Harbor. After that, the security data will be consumed by Kubernetes clusters, which have project narrows installed. And finally, the scanning result of Kubernetes cluster, along with the, all the misconfiguration information of the clusters will be gathered. Okay, let me show you how to install project narrows from scratch.
So after you clone the GitHub repo or project narrows to your local, you can just execute this command to simply deploy the project narrows to your Kubernetes clusters. In this installation script, it, it will check all the dependencies you need to install this project. And after that, run this command. Then you can find out. there are some new namespaces are created. All the components of project narrows will be deployed in this namespace. And you can also find a namespace uh, named cron job. The name the namespace named cron job will be created after user set up the policy. In this namespace, cron jobs will be triggered periodically to scan the workload in the cluster. At the same time, you can find in this namespace. We have the open source instance installed. So after the scanning job finished by default, all the reports will be gathered to into the open source instance. Okay, so the installation is all set. Let's watch a demo of the portal. The environment we are using is set up with the VMware application catalog, hardware, and is ready to use Project Narrows. Under settings, a platform administrator must create a secret to connect to hardware and VEC. Then he must specify the security data source and fill in the endpoint of the data sources. And today we will use hardware and VEC. Now that the configurations are complete, the security auditor can specify the scanning rules in the policy section. To create a policy, there are a number of fields to fill out, including how often the scan should run, the scanners you would like to enable. User can also fill out the configurations of their open search instance, so all the reports generated can be aggregated into the central place. VAC is a Customers for selection or trusted prepackaged application components that are continuously maintained and verified for use in production environment. With the involvement of VAC, 
it opens several OSS inspection use cases for users. After that, the user can define the baselines to set up the security expectations. This is important because workloads that vary any of these baselines defined will be flagged. Here, you can choose whether you want to print in the workloads that are flagged. To view these reports, you can find them in the report section. The application developer and security auditor are going to care most of all this area. We have three types of reports generated correlating to the three kinds of scanners we specified in the policy. In the image risk reports, this view shows the history of numbers of containers scanned by project arrows. We are going to dig into one to see more detailed information. In this report, default namespace was scanned. We will drill down on the Apache. In this container, it is offered and continuous maintained by VEC. So we can get the information here. In the cluster vulnerability reports, it shows the reports of the QBench scanner you specified in the policy. QBench scans the misconfigurations and checks whether Kubernetes is deployed securely. Then we will come to the risk scanning report section. The software packages inside the workload containers can be scanned by the risk scanner. And here are the scanning results. We also got a score for measuring the severity of the vulnerability for each CVE. Another area for the security auditor is to view not only the security posture, but also the risk trains which we organized into three categories, cluster, namespace, and the close. Okay, so so that's all for the demo. And for more detailed information, please visit our GitHub repo. We look forward to engaging with the cloud native community, getting feedback and learning how people want to adopt and use these capabilities. If you are interested in working with us more closely, please email us at narrows at .com to discuss the possibilities of becoming an early customer, user, or other potential partnership opportunities. Thanks for joining us today.